You there yet? Anybody else there? No, come on. All right. I think I've said you won't. Hey, we're going. And then you yourself can Google and point out. Right, oh, what have we got? Yeah, massive 27 comments. Hey, I'm not a very big YouTuber, right? I'm just an old man who does his homework. I was taught by the old fashioned principle get out and do your homework and use common sense, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to um, ask somebody can they translate? There's one, somebody wrote me a great big bloody long message. Danish, I think it's Danish, Belgium. What, what's the language of Belgium? Is that Danish, German, whatever? Um, can they translate it for me? Because I can't speak that language. Okay, 27 messages. Oh, my aching back. I had a very big day today. I went down to the city of Sydney and I've done a lot of filming down there today. And I got myself overtired. And now my back's killing me. You're not getting cold, eggs. We're getting old. Bloody knees are cold. All right. Oh. Shut that bloody drawer. Oh. Hey, I'm entitled to it. I'm an old man. I've worked all my bloody life. I started work at the age of bloody 12 years old. Right. Uh, what have we got here? This is not name and shame. Down our brown cow. I'd love to get rid of him. <laughs> I could I couldn't really see his um no. Great vid, great video, mate. Our beaches here on the east coast are brutal and unforgiving. It's a solid theory you have, and I feel like you're right, especially about the Chinese spying on our phone technology here in Australia. All right, Mac, thank you. Everybody supporting me. I'm in Sydney and travel 900 kilometres and experience living. Some locals know more log logic local movements. Um, they know more logical local movements then police educated in academies, but practice makes perfect. When you drive a cab at Byron Bay, live in a motorhome on the streets of Byron Bay, do research. Locals don't tell police as much as cab drivers. Things I've heard and seen witness will blow your mind. I'm open-minded, and that's the key. And I've got four great big likes on that one. Now... What's, what's what I can tell you? Whoopi Goldberg walked up to me at um, Darling Harbour with Rose Johns in a wheelchair cab way back in 1993. Swimming pool back in 90, 97, 98, when he'd done Men in Black and he came out there to Sydney. Uh, he went out to the Sydney swimming pool. Um, two Fridays in a row, I come around the corner of Chalice Avenue into Victoria. Took him straight up Victoria Street, turn left back in the main street of um, Darling Earth Kings Cross way back in 1991. And he had my towel around him and he walked off into the Rex Hotel. And the usher came out and said, Here's, here's um, 10 bucks for your fare. Come back tomorrow, pick up your towel. And the next day, I walked past and I said, Oh, you got my towel here. I'm the cab driver from last night. I'm on my way down to work. He said, you hit, and this other dormer was on. Oh, yeah, here it is, sir. He gave me back my towel. And the first guy got thrown out of a, a, a brothel and got robbed. They took all his clothes, threw him out the street naked. So he threw me a $50 tip, and the Rex, and the Rex Hotel gave me a free dressing gown, and his $50 tip, and um, plus the dormer already gave me $10 for the cab fare. But it's like, you know, one block long. You got to look it up. Tell us having you at uh, Potts Point up to Victoria and Darling Earth Road, the old Rex Hotel. And then seven days later, I thought, oh, my God, tell us having you again. I hope I don't get another naked guy. As soon as I go around the corner past the same truck, here's another naked guy standing there. 
well, this guy then, he then borrows my towel again. The next day, I go back and pick up my towel again. And then uh, the next day when I picked up the towel, I got another by a different doorman again, another bathrobe and a hundred dollar tip. So mate, we never thrown ahead of rocks. <laughs> oh mate, I've seen it. I'll tell you. Uh, as I say to people, I've been everywhere, man. I've seen everything. You know, it's just nothing worries me. Anyway, let's get on with it. Channel Nine is saying he came out of the car crop on the beach. You wouldn't. I've got two thumbs up on that one. Billy Kent said to 10 days ago, great study you did. I live near Byron Bay. When this happened, at first I suspected foul play. Wouldn't thought about this scenario. He could have just walked down to the water and a big shore wave swept him out. Condolences to the Theo's family. Six thumbs up. Thank you to um, Billy Kent. So thank you, Billy Kent. Thank you very much. Amber Q. I lived in Byron Bay during my uni days. It's so strange. He went to tell us it's definitely the most deserted beach in Byron. I wouldn't think to go there at night, but maybe if I had been drinking with a few people and I was going along with them, I would. That's the kind of vibe the town. It's go with the flow. So I think that's the best guess is there is there was a party involvement. Oh, there was third party involvement. Sympathy from uh, Belgium. You really nailed it. Thank you very much. He answered the question in the video or the actual Theo video with the car on it. Where does it Belgium is 16 years of old the drink? We've got Stella Arios here. It's waste G double O N. Now I'm going to go into that. I've lost my connection. I just lost my connection. I'm going to read that again because I don't know what it's what it's done recording or not recording or what. So sorry. Arios here. It's way stronger than the average Aussie beer. Believe me, if he was drunk, it was from the goon before. I walked this trail as a fellow Belgian myself in December 2019. We have to find out why for me, which was it's coming. No, where'd it go? Um, thank you. <laughs> right. Sam King, thank you, Sam King, nine days ago. I'm with you. He went for a swim and got deep and swept away. One thumbs up, one reply from me. The FA footy, great video, love your passion, and again, nine days ago, same day. What time did Theo wake up on the day he went missing? Good work, two thumbs up, one reply from me, thank you. Sam King again, 10 days. A de that's a decent rip. So he's obviously gone back. So Sam King's gone back and looked at it. He said, oh, that's a decent rip. Two thumbs up. One comment there for me saying thank you. Sam King again, interesting yarn. Seven days ago, thumbs up, thumbs up. Good job on the camera route, but. And that was some bloke with a horse. I don't know who that was. Looks like a horse. Uh, Bambi, Bambi, uh, that high knock, give one, one day, word and that, eh, do, best win. I can't understand the word you're saying, mate. So, uh, who's Bambi? Bambi Samba. Uh, comment on Theo, good job. So, I don't know what Bambi Zamba said. I have no idea. The Murray. Well, very simply, because <laughs> the company he was in, he probably left him behind before he went up to the corner of the beach because a lot of the times they'd walk down onto the beach and see the weather, and you've got to remember it's the middle of winter, and they probably thought, oh, no, it's too cold. It's midnight. We won't worry about starting the fire. And Theo's going, oh, no, I'll walk up there and by myself. Because it was clear on the GPS tracks, he went a dead straight line, sat down and put his phone down. 
right? And then he also walked straight up to the little lookout, come back down, walked up, put his phone down, and then 5.19, 5.18 a.m., he walked down to the beach, phone activated, turned off again, then come back, and then later on the next day at 12.10 a.m., the phone gets turned on again and he goes around the headland. So that's when we think there's two different people. Well, Theo's walked in. Theo definitely didn't walk in with the phone in his hand at 5.19 in the morning, which is high tide. So that's definitely not Theo. That was the first person. Then there was the second person. So where's the place and why were the companies in report it? Well, very simply, because Theo walked out by himself and he's walked up Tennyson Road, come back down because he heard the drug addicts and all the ruckus. He thought, whoop. And then he realised his map, he's going to go up around the high mountain ground. So he thought, oh, no, I'll go back, go across the footpath, realised, got the map, going like this. So he's met other backpackers down there. He said, and then there's whatever. And then he's walked up there by himself. But the way where his trail was, he wasn't agil- what we call adulating. He wasn't going like that. It's just a dead straight walk. And you can see that on the 60 minutes. And then also his own uh, father said they'd right, try to reenact his steps. And it showed he, he brisk walk, went slow, brisk walk, and went slow, brisk walk, went slow, brisk walk, went slow. Now, that's not somebody who's been held against their will. You would see what we call in Australia, he was on a mission. He was on a mission to go down the beach, to go down and have a goon. Now, if you don't know what a goon is, the G-O-O-N, it's a wine basket. I Rocker had it on his channel there tonight, I Rocker, that uh, Illinois fellow over there in America near Chicago, and he's doing 101 questions about Australia. And the guy said, and it's got a plastic bag in it with a tap, and that's called a goon. And what, you, what the backpackers do and all the Australians do, they don't wear out the cardboard box. It, it gets annoying. So what you take it out of the cardboard box, pull the whole thing out, put the cardboard box in the rubbish bin, and then you walk along with a goon. And you... So just for the sake of it, I'll put a goon on here on TV here one night. I'll get a, a $10 goon tomorrow night, and we'll get pissed on camera. So if you'd like to see Mr. Tom and I get pissed on a goon there tomorrow night, come back in, we'll do a live stream, I'll show you what a goon is. But if you don't know what a goon is, I'll show you what a goon is. Now, if you don't know what a drop bear is, it's a Bundaberg rum. It's a Bundaberg rum. It's got a white polar bear on it. And the, the joke was that you drop off to sleep, so I'll go and have a drop of the bear. I'll go and have a drop of the bear and drop off to sleep. And that's how the nickname drop bear come about, sleep. I'll say it again slowly for non-English speaking countries. You go and have a drip drop of Bundaberg rum and that will make you sleepy so you drop off to sleep. So you have a drop of the bear, which is a white polar bear, on the Australian Bundaberg rum bottle. And that's where it comes from. And that's why I call me Mr. Ominoid, because I learned all that, because all that started when I was driving in the State Highway back in 1980, uh, God, what was it? 83, um, the backpackers come out in. 1979, there was no backpackers. So it's the beginning of the 80s, or 82, once we won the America's Cup, we were sort of brought onto the planet, you know. Oh, Australia kicked America's ass, you know, in America's Cup. Anyway. Read more, translate. Oh, here we go. I uh, Bambi Simbi. I hope that he is still found, and that there are proofs of Theo's. There are proofs for Theo's parents. Thank you for the video. It's very good that you helped pick for Theo's hope. Something works out with that key. And that's from Bambi, whoever, I hope. So this is a translation. It's just come through on my phone. I hope that he is patient. Thank you for the video. It's very good that you helped think for Theo's hope. Something works out with that key. 
And then it says, and there's one comment, and I think I wrote, I wrote uh, in English. Oh my God, go away. Um, no, right, English one, please. You, yeah, but anyway. So, there's all, there's been all sorts of questions. Car park, wrong police said, why do you try and climb the rocks? As I said, why did he go up the beach? Right. Now, the latest update is that Theo's, well, the keys I found on the beach, they were picked up by the, uh, Welcome, everyone, to... Yeah, welcome, everyone, to me, Mr. Hominoid. How's that for a nice catch? <laughs> um, I turned around and said... Uh, oh, now I just lost myself. Um, this damn thing flashing in my eye. Um, what was I going to say? I've forgotten now. Uh, oh, but the car key. Car key. The car key was that you're going to try and use the chip and the cutting of the key to find out whoever owns the car. And, of course, I said, well, you know, it's two and a half years after the fact that Theo disappeared. Um, anybody could have dropped it there any time, but they, feel, they still think it's related because they've got some lead. And the private investigator said they're going to try and do it, but they said they've got to get the keys of the police. And I said, well, if you do that. And they said, yeah, we know. They won't tell us anything. So what's the point? I mean, I mean, you're wasting your time. I mean, you really want to do it. You should have gave me the car key. I'll take it down to an auto shop, one of these dealerships that I know, that brand of car, Subaru, and I'll get it traced. I've got mates in the automotive. I'm an automotive structural engineer. But Ken Gamble and all them, they just he just wanted the key and, you know, he didn't even park in my driveway. I said, park in my driveway, walked in the front door, he parked in the next door neighbor's driveway, but knocked on their door. I mean, God, he couldn't even get me address right. So I mean, I'm sitting there shaking my head. I'm going, what's he doing over there, place? I said, next door to, you know, to the blah, 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 and the next day he parked in their driveway. And they go, well, no, he lives over there. Ken, I think your mate's got some wax in the ears, mate. He's got some. It's all harmless. But anyway, he got the key. But I would have taken down one of the car dealers I know. I mean, mate, I drove a cab for 17 years. How, how many motor mechanics and automotive structural engineers do you think I know around the countryside? You know. You know, uh, does that, you know that's, that's the one thing we've got to learn. We automotive structural engineer. And you cut a car in half and you stretch it into a limo. I've got photos of it. I've, it's way down on my channel. Go way down on my channel back in the old, old, old stuff. As a photo of me standing there, I was uh, 1980. I was 20 something years old. I was standing in the middle of a stretch limo, but I was smoking. You know, I cut an XC Ford Falcon. I cut it in half and I stretched it by four me uh, 1.8 meters or something, or 1.4 meters or something like that. One and a half meters. Two meters. No, it wasn't two meters. No, it was about 1.4, 1.5, something like that. But anyway, so as they say, what? how much do I know about what? So I rock in America. If you get to watch this, I put a cup, I put a quiz up there for you, and you're going to answer a couple of questions about Moreland Bar, Wagga Wagga, and a town with, t with an M and a U and a T, and it's got five letters in it, and you're Put it in the mirror and read it backwards. It still spells the same name. What's the name of the town, right? It's a quiz question there for iRocker. So if you know iRocker in America, and you can leave him a message, he's not answering me. I, uh, he seen me on, on the live stream chat when he was on the car races. And he went, oh, I missed all you know. But he hasn't got back to me. So here's a little bit of something for iRocker in America and everybody else around the world. 90% of these places I've been to. I've been everywhere. 
Well, I was up in my blue on the dusty Udnadatta road when along came a semi with a high and canvas covered load. If you got the word in the data, mate, um, with me you can ride. So I climbed in the cabin and I settled down inside. He asked me if I'd seen a road with so much dust and sand. I said, listen, mate. I've traveled every road in this land, cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, pay man. I've been from out of pain, man. I've traveled out of my chin, man. I've been everywhere. Been to tell them I've seen more than one little by man, more which don't kill more than a lot of birds. I'll never go to follow those kind of wild, come back, sweat, run, cross, try, never doubt, I'll die. And she didn't know it's a lot of killer, but I said the bugs ever come from around a killer. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, pay man. I've been from out of pain, man. I've traveled out of pain. Didn't know the answer. That's called buggery. Go to buggery. <laughs> well, I just sort of throw that in there. Got to put some excitement. <laughs> One thirty in the morning. Now, now got three messages. <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. Get in there, look. I've been in them all, but I was at Willamaloo tonight. They said Willamaloo. On the song, get in and have a look. We'll do Malu. I was there tonight. I went down there at dinner. Go and have a look. He says the homeless food center went down there to check it out to see what good food this homeless people are getting. So do a donation there for the um, Reverend Ken. Ken? Um, it's down on the channel. It's uploading now. It's about two channels down here in Australia and America. And this guy, he does everything. Go and watch the clip. After, I, after I'm sitting on the train, I'll show you what I ate there. And then what I've got home, I Googled it, and then I found out really how much this guy does. He gets rent. He pays people's rent. He pays people's electricity, clothing, psychiatric, chiropractors, psychologists, all sorts of stuff. And he's a priest. And he's, he's 70 years old. He's still going. And he's doing his 50th. Christmas party next fortnight on Christmas Day at 10.45 a.m. 180 Liverpool Road, Ashfield. So all the homeless people in Sydney can go out to Ashfield. Uh, most city people just hang out the streets. They go somewhere. But homeless people around, say, Ashfield, and you wonder how much I know. Okay, you got Ashfield, Summer Hill, Lewisham, Petersham, Stanmore, Burwood, Croydon, Croydon Park. You've got Five Drock and you've got Anna Grove and you've got Leichhardt and Annandale and all those sorts of places. They will go around over there to Asheville and also probably Canterbury, Campsie, Belmore, Lakemba, Bankstown, all them sorts of places. Mate, I drove a cab for 17 years. You want me to keep going? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about this one? What's how good I am? Okay. Let's, let's see if I can name all the towns by rubber line. Now, there's somebody on the channel out there. Are you are you in Sydney, Australia? Somebody's up there. Are you in are you in Australia? Are you in Sydney? Give me give me a challenge. See, see if I can name a railway line. All well, the towns on it. Where's my mouse going? 
Put my mouse. There it is. Yeah, I got me. I've got the thing here blocking the screen. I don't know if somebody gave me a message or not. Somebody's up there. Yeah, good morning to you. It's uh, 1.34 in the morning over here in uh, Sydney. On a beautiful Friday, and we've got exactly, uh, what's the day? It's the 10th. Oh, my God, we've got 15 days of Christmas. Dingle bell, dingle bell, dingle all the way. You're going to wear your antlers. Anyway. All right, okay, let's say Bondi Junction, Edgecliff, King's Cross, Martin Place, Town Hall, Central, Redburn. Let me keep going. Erskine, Bill, St. Peter's, Tepe, Uncliffe, Banksy, Rockdale, Cobra, Carlton, Alloa, Hurstville. Penzance, Mortdale, Oatley, Como, Janelli, Sutherland. Loftus, Ingerdane, Loftus, Ingerdane, Heathcote, Waterfall. Or well, how about if we turn left? We go Sutherland, and then we go there towards Cronulla. We go... Sullivan, Guy Mia. Anybody know the next one? Miranda, Caring Bar. Anybody else know the next one? Woolaware, Granola. There you go. Tell me if I miss one. <laughs> I know. Let's try another one. Uh, Central Red Fern. You ready for it? McDonald Town, which everybody forgets about. And then we go to Newtown, Petersham, Stanmore, Croydon. Did, did I say Ashfield? I meant to say, did I get Ashfield in there? Anyway, Newtown, Petersham, Stanmore, Ashfield, Burwood, Croydon, uh, Burwood, Stratfield, Homebush, Flemington, Homebush, or Homebush, hang on. Homebush, Flemington, Lincoln. I'm going backwards. Um, Auburn, Clyburn, Clyde. People forget about Clyburn. Yeah, it's been gone there about 40 years. 40 years, yeah. There was a road station between Clyde and Auburn. It's called Clyburn. Anyway, and then it was Auburn, Granville, Harris Park, Parramatta, Westmead, Wentworthville, Pendle Hill. Toon Gabby, Seven Hills, Blacktown, Marion, Quakers Hill, Schofields, Riverston, Vineyard, Mulgrave, Windsor, Clarendon, East Richmond and Richmond. Very simple. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. What do you think? Hey, you want to go for Mimi Plains, Penrith? Then we go on the Kingswood and then we just go to Warrington, St Mary's, then we go to Mount Druitt, then we go to Rudy or Dunes on Blacktown. And then we go to Seven Hills, Toon Gabby. Pendleton, Wentworthville, Westmead, Parramatta, Harris Park, Ramble, Clyde Auburn, Clyburn, Auburn, Lincoln, Robinson, Homebush, Stratfield, Burwood, Redford. That's the express train. Redford Central, Down or Vineyard, Circular Quay, Museum, St. James. Sorry, St. James Museum. <laughs> so you're going to catch me. Want to go to that bridge? Milson Point, North Sydney. Wilson, Grass, St. Leonard's. <laughs> Can't get me lost. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. Anyway, from Mr. Hominoid down under, um, yeah, you go look all those. Go rewind the tape. Go back and play. Go, go get a Sydney uh, railway map out and go and have, see if I'm right. You won't find Clyburn on the map because it's not there, but it's in between Clyde and Auburn. It's just a little block of concrete sitting in, in between the train tracks. And right next to it on Google Earth, you can see the big railway yards. And it's Clyburn. No, it's Clyburn railway yards. So I've been every bit man. So anyways, let's hope the Theo one day gets solved. Um, as far as Theo's clothes go, I think somebody just picked them up and said, oh, look, a bunch of clothes, thank you very much, leave the phone, no good to me, and walked away with a nice set of clothes like I brought under the purple and white towel. And um, I rocker, there's a kangaroo there for you, mate. If you want a bit of kangaroo meat, you can go and eat that one there, mate. It's going to be a bit stuffed. But it's a teddy bear kangaroo. Hello, crude on bear in Houston, Texas. And she's on Rumble. Rumble in the uh, Canadian thing. Instead of YouTube, she's got on the Rumble. So if anybody's got kids like you, I rocker, go and check out the famous crude on bear on YouTube. And then she moved over to Rumble, R U M B O L, Rumble. So she's over there. And uh, I'll go and watch her thing. 
Now, somebody else said something about on Google something, and then they tried to Yahoo something, and then they couldn't find it. So this is from the Book of Knowledge. Back to you. Right? Yahoo and Google are basically Microsoft. And do you know where the Yahoo comes from? No, everybody thinks that the word Yahoo is American. Google is American under Microsoft. Yahoo is Australian. Why do you think Channel 7 is at yahoo.com in Sydney? Yahoo is an Australian word. Don't believe me? All right, let's have a look. I'm getting tired. Man, I love proving points. Now, a Yahoo is what we used to call somebody who runs a muck, somebody who runs around like an idiot. So if I type in the word Yahoo means question mark, Yahoo, informal. A rude, noisy, or violent person. What did I just say? What is the full meaning of Yahoo? What is the original meaning of Yahoo? Right, the original meaning of Yahoo. The, uh, the word Yahoo was coined by Jonathan Swift in the fourth section of Gulliver's Travel has since entered the English language or more broadly, hence the term Yahoo, has come to mean a crude, brutish, brutish or obscenely coarse, obscenely coarse person from Gulliver's Travels. Remember Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels? What is a Yahoo used for? A web portal search engine, Yahoo search related services, including My Yahoo, Yahoo Mail, Yahoo News, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Sports, blah, blah, blah. What is the meaning of a Yahoo girl? Yahoo girl meaning from Nigerian law, Yahoo girl, people who carry out 419 fraud. This number refers to the articles of Nigerian criminal code, which directly deals with fraud. It is also a kind of swindle in which lawyers usually propose plenty of money for a smaller upfront deal. In other words, a criminal. In other words, a bad person. So Yahoo is not really, you know, whatever. But you're going to find uh, there's all sorts of meanings to the word Yahoo. Does Yahoo mean happy? What is the original meaning of Yahoo? No, already done that one. Um, it's actually an Aboriginal word. Uh, Brutes, uh, it's Hebrew as well. That's all Yahoo mean, meaning Japanese. And also Americans going, Yahoo! Wow. Right, so there you go. There's all sorts of meanings to the word Yahoo. You can yell out Yahoo. But all those search engines is Microsoft. Now, if you want to hide something, now let's just say, now the question was put up, oh, it was a missing person in England. I was investigating. And the thing was, the guy was talking about this guy that disappeared in England. And he had a PlayStation, portable PlayStation. And it's obviously Microsoft. And when he Googled PlayStation to track it, because it uses Wi-Fi software to upload from the satellite. So as you run around doing your uh, uh, stuff, right, it can track you. So... What this guy did, he wanted to know, could he use the satellite to track the PlayStation portable mobile thing 
And Google come back and said, no, you can't do it. But isn't Google owned partly by Microsoft? Isn't it part of their network? Isn't PlayStation part of Microsoft, the software like Android? That's how they track your phone. You know why they didn't want to let you know? Because when they watch you play your PlayStation, they then know what to market you in marketing. Like I said, the Chinese on the mobile phones, Hawiva and Oppo, the Chinese can follow you. On this Microsoft, they're sending me all sorts of crap. There's enemy KFC, McDonald's, Best and Less Friends Club there now, right in front of me. I'm looking at it because I went down and I bought some new shirts. And because I didn't go to Best and Less, I walked into Target. But I walked into a Best and Less shop and the phone registered Best and Less. Now I'm getting all these Best and Less adverts but I didn't buy from them see and that's all started from last fortnight when I went out uh, Wednesday two weeks Coles flybys there you go it's just come up because I walked into Coles and the mobile phone in my pocket I've never used my Coles flybys but because I walked in there I used Microsoft do the COVID, it says Coles. So now, let's see what else pops up. And then I think there was one there for a library because I went past St Mary's Library. And then they are sending me out things about books. See how they read your phone? You just got to pay attention to all these ads that they send you out. Then you think, where did I go for that to come up? Oh, books, library. Coles, Coles, best and less, because I went past best and less, I ended up going into Target because I didn't have what I wanted. But anyway, that's just another thing. So that's why <laughs> they wouldn't tell this guy about Microsoft in the PlayStation portable remote control gamer because they're tracking him. And they're seeing where he goes and what shops he goes into to send him marketing stuff like they've been sending me. But when this private investigator typed it in in England and I said to him, I said, they won't acknowledge that they've got tracking on PlayStation because it's a breach of privacy. Very simply, it's a breach of your privacy. No matter what their country you're in, they're tracking you. It's against the law. So that's why Microsoft, when you buy a Microsoft toy, even a PlayStation game, they will use it to track you because you've got to talk to a satellite while you're playing that Game Boy or, or whatever you want to call it. You see what I mean? But this guy wanted to point out. So, and then I said to him, well, go into a website. Now, get, get your pen ready. You're ready for it. You want to find out stuff that Yahoo and Google won't tell you. You go into a website called duckduck.com. D-U-C-K, D-U-C-K.com. Right? That's what I'll do. It's research. Duckduck.com. Might cost you a few dollars, but it's not a Microsoft company. It's not a software company. It's an information hub. Totally different. DuckDuck.com. Give it a go and see what you find out. The Google doesn't tell you. Now, you can get on your own phone and you can type in there PlayStation tracking, portable PlayStation tracking. It'll give you, then you go DuckDuck.com. The page will light up. So hopefully I'll talk to something there from Mr. Hominoy down under. Good night. Thank you. 1.40 a.m., 1.49 a.m. my time. 
Thank you to all those people, all those lovely comments. Thank you so much. And please leave me a comment on the bottom of this uh, live stream if you get to watch it in the next 12, 48 hours and whatever. And thank you. That's why I put the Theo and all the rest of it. So remember, anything you buy an electronic device, a game, PlayStation game, uh, Nintendo, I don't know. I don't play the stuff, right? All that, if, you, if it's talking to a satellite, they're tracking you, right? It's just not a mobile phone. That's why, you wait for it, in 2000, they switched off the analog mobile phones because the government couldn't track you because the Australian Army had analog phones way back in 1956. Yeah, way before they come public. My family's been quite high up in the military. I'm going to say that much. My brother-in-law phoned me one day on a little Ericsson 377. So go look up an Ericsson 377. See how, how long ago that came out. And he came out and he rang me up and he said, you're driving along. Salto Road on the corner of Salto, watch out, this big white semi coming up the hill. And this is the second mobile phone I ever owned. The first mobile phone was a Telstra in a bag, and then they came out with Sony Ericsson Little Thing. Next day, he rings me up about 1997, 1998, and he said, you're driving up. He said, watch out, the big semi coming up the hill, he's speeding. So I pulled the car up and I stopped, and this big semi come up, and he went around the corner in front of me like that, great big white, great big white semi, and it was white, like a colour white, and the brand was white, a white, you know. And I said, where are you? He said, I'm down here in Melbourne. He said, I'm watching you on a satellite in from the from the uh, army base. The Australian Army has had surveillance cameras long before 1997, 98, long before... You even got Google Earth, even long before you got Google Earth Street View. When Google Earth come out on your computer, when was that? Australian military, American military, all had it for decades before it was released to the public. And this is how it works. You want to know how it works? This is how it works. The military gets scientists to develop something. It's classified top secret. Then when it gets out of date, they sell it to companies like Microsoft and a few others. So they get back their investment that they spend into it. Microsoft and all the other companies like Apple then buy it off them and sell it to you or put it out there for merchandise. For the money the military get it back, they then reinvent it in the new technologies. So actual fact, when you've got Google Earth first hit, first hit your computer in two, was it, uh, 2004, I think I just, or well, 2003, I was still on dial-up. So I don't think we had Google Earth until about 2010, if my memory serves me right. Well, my brother-in-law, was watching me in 1997, 1998. Answer that one. It's my own brother-in-law. I said, why did you do it? He said, I was just bored. He just said, I wanted to see where you were for the day. So he said, I just tracked your phone. He said, I followed your phone because I had a SIM card in it. It wasn't the old analog phone. It had a SIM card. And this all goes back down to the Theo's phone tracking SIM card. See, it's all connected. It's one great big bloody stew pot we live in in this world. So if you can understand that, that's what I mean. The whole world is a great big stew pot. This leads to that, leads to this, leads to that, leads to this, leads to that. It's a domino effect. Analog mobile phones were shut down in Australia in 2000 because they couldn't track it. They had to get three antennas to get a location on you. It took too long. Once they brought out the satellites, they could track your SIM card. What are these things? 
and a little promotion, that's the one I use. It's the best little SIM card you'd ever get, a May SIM. It's got the best deal there is. So May SIM, I hope I get a, a contract out here. But with that SIM card, they can track me where I go, what I buy on my phone, what food I go to, what restaurants, what supermarkets, everywhere else. Your eye in the sky, Big Brother is watching. That's why they got rid, again, I'll say, that's why they got rid of the analog mobile phone service. And it was a better service than digital because digital has to be line of sight. And I remember using an analog phone. I was out, out in the back of the boondocks in my motorhome in 1995, and I could hear Melbourne or Sydney clear as a bell. As soon as I got a digital phone, I went out there, what? What are you saying? What? I had an analog phone down in a town called Sackville. S-A-C-K-V-I-L-L-E, Sackville, New South Wales. I couldn't hear a bloody word on, on the digital phone. But when I picked up my analog phone, it was loud as all hell. Because like the old-fashioned CB radio, AM radio, it could ricochet and bounce off all the mountains. Not digital. Straight ahead. So I hope I talked to something there from Mr. Hominoid. <laughs> You've been getting watched by the government ever since about 1998, 1997 here in Australia. In your country, I don't know. But I know that because my family's all been in the military. I've even told people I've been in the military. I've told people I've been there in the military. So, and I'm not allowed to say who my sister was or what, what my brother did or any other members of my family, brothers or sisters. Right, I've got to cut my ass. It's called the ASIO Act, Australian Secrets Intelligence Organisation Act. We're not allowed to talk about it. Neither shouldn't even be talking about it. So there you go, ASIO. That organisation that does not exist, that came out in 2010 and said, yes, we're ASIO. We've been around since 1930. And there's stories of ASIO agents walking around following people in Bendigo and Ballarat because they had a German heritage before World War II, and they, they were watching people in Bar Ballarat and Bendigo because of the German name. That's ASIO. That's how long they've been around. The organisation doesn't exist until, go and Google ASIO. They went public about 2010, 2015 because something happened and they, they, they got exposed. They couldn't deny it, but, but we all knew about it. Oh, ASIO, yeah, yeah, we all know it. It's like Area 51. Oh, it doesn't exist. Oh, yeah, sure, American government. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know what goes on. But anyway, but poor old Theo, get back to all those people. Hello to the second person on the channel. Leave me a comment. Say hello. Don't be rude. Say good morning. Hello. It's uh, 1.57 a.m. in the morning over here on the 10th of December, 2021. You're talking to Mr. Hominoid over in Sydney, Australia. So who are you? How are you? No, hope you're well. And it's the 32nd delay. Um, uh, it's 50 minutes and 49 50 seconds. I said earlier on in the channel, if you just come in, is that I said thank you to all the subscribers and to all the people on the Theo Hayes story, all the comments I got, all the information I got, the update on the car keys, which has now gone off to private investigators. They've come around to my house. They've actually picked it up from my house here in Sydney, um, which is the Ken Gable bloke on the 60 Minutes TV show. That was his partner come around. He picked it up. Uh, he, night before last, about 5, 6 o'clock at night or whatever it was. Um, and I'm done with the key. The key's gone. They can go trace it and do whatever they want. But I, to me, it's irrelevant. I found it two and a half years after Theo disappeared. To me, it's irrelevant. Anybody could have dropped it. Anyway. So, what else? Oh, I put up a couple of videos here tonight. I went down to Wulamalu, beautiful place by the water in Indigenous language. Uh, I was down there tonight to see me, uh, the video I loaded up. It's called The Homeless People of Sydney and the meals I got. I showed you the meal I got from the homeless shelter in Sydney. Uh, it's a band that pulls up. And it's run by a reverend uh, priest. He comes out of Ashfield and he drives 10 kilometres, eight miles into the city. And he does the homeless people. Uh, 20 years ago, there used to be about 160 homeless people used to be there. 
And then tonight there was only about 15, which is a good sign, which means a lot of those people are now being housed and moved on or passed away in the last 20 odd years. But there was nobody there from 20 years ago when I drove a cab past there, they were all gone. Because I used to drop in there as a cab driver and put a jacket over my uniform and I used to go around and show them all a couple of bucks in their pockets, you know. Yeah, it's a really down and out. But I wouldn't give them money for drugs. Or or if they miss the food van, the food van closed up and some guy would run up and go, oh, I missed out. I said, come on, mate, I'll go and buy you Maccas. I'll go and buy Maccas or something like that. I'd shout at my feet. That's what sort of bloke I am. I've always been like that. I always, I always buy somebody a feed or a drink or a coffee or like the idiot that got dragged off here to jail. I met him 10 years ago. I bought him a cup of coffee, gave him 10, 10 bucks and a cigarette lighter in Eddie Avenue Central. Turned out he only lived about 10 k's down the road from where I am from here. And this is in the heart of Sydney. Small world. The people you meet, Whoopi Goldberg, Poison, Midnight Oil, um, Will Smith, these people I've met, um, Nelson Mandela, when he came out to Australia back in the 90s, uh, Sir Roden Cutler, he used to be his personal driver, uh, the former New South Wales Governor General, there's Sir Roden Cutler House in Sydney. Uh, who else have I had? Um, I've had a meat pie standing next to, get you ready for this one, Olivia Newton John. Down at Harry's Cafe to Wheels at Woolen Maloop. And there was a photograph used to be on the wall down there, but now there's a different owners. They took the photos away. And the one of the Olivia Newton John, you see me standing behind the shoulder. Because when I was there, I showed me, mate, he didn't believe me. He said, I'll be stuffed. That is you. <laughs> yeah, I was younger, of course. Not this beautiful face now. But anyway, for me, Mr. Hominoid, good night, thanks. I bet you that's my son, Chris, or that's Chris up at Moolamba. Hello, Chris. I'm guessing that's you. Uh, I'm going to bed. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Good night, thanks. God bless. God love you. And Mr. Hominoid at gmail.com. Send me an email. If you've got a question, query about Australia, I rocker in America, give me a kick up the ass and say, hey, Mr. Hominoid's talking about you. And uh, send him a message on whatever he's on. Uh, I don't know, I don't seem to be able to get through to him or he's not acknowledging me. Maybe it's his Mexican girlfriend or something that's not getting any messages. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's his problem. I don't worry about other people. I worry about me. I've had my life. I've, I've had a good life. So as they say...